So welcome to Tech Basement. This is episode eight, coming to you from Sydney, Australia. Dean, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you, Matt? Yeah, awesome. I was just uh, admiring the view out the back of our Tech Basement in Sydney. Uh, great shot of the, the Harbour Bridge, uh, Centre Point Tower, the whole city skyline here. It's a tough day in the EMC office in uh, in the Tech <laughs> Basement today. Yeah. Yep. Um, so just just a couple things before we get started uh, with episode eight. Yeah. Um, you know. Uh, I think we've all been taking Uber a lot. Um, I think you took Uber here today. From yeah, that's, I took an Uber this morning, a couple yesterday. I've been getting around town and Uber. It's fantastic. Oh, of course. Yeah. And you know what I've realized, Dean, is lately is, um, you know, I think a lot about Uber from a customer perspective and what it does for, for customers. But I had a, had a realization yesterday. I was talking to uh, one of the drivers who was an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, he had a day job working in, in a finance company. Uh, he was a technologist. And he... He basically quit to follow his dream. And what he said to me is, without Uber, I would not have been able to do this. So he, he's doing a startup, building a software company. It's going to uh, product he'll put in hotels. And uh, the goal is to uh, launch his product in a few weeks. Mm -hmm. Now, in his spare time, he drives an Uber to get a bit of cash and keep the cash flow coming in. But mm -hmm. because of the flexibility, he can, uh, he can do that when he wants. So the, the realization for me, and I've had a series of other Uber drivers saying the same thing, it's helping people follow their dreams, uh, chase things that they would have done, and probably helping the startup scene in Australia, particularly in the tech and, and finance industry. Yeah, I've seen some similar things. I had an Uber driver that was a uh, data analytic scientist. Yeah. He was had an awesome vehicle and just between gigs, and you know, from that to uh, another fellow who was 76 years old and just making some extra money, so really changing the world, yeah. cool stuff. Fantastic. So, Dean, no guest today. What's the what's the deal? What's going on? Well, uh, if you remember, I, you have, we had virtual Dean in an episode way back because I couldn't uh, be in the same room. But I think today we're going to do a virtual guest, but a, uh, the guest is going to be an EMC solution. Okay, so not a person, but a uh, technology. Yep. Yeah. So, so today we're going to talk about VX Rail. So, why don't we bring in uh, bring in the rail? All right. Here we go. There it is. Here it is. So fantastic. So the real technology is in the solution center. This is the virtual VX Rail. This is the virtual one, but it, it's as good as the real one. And uh, this is an entire um, uh, VX Rail uh, note yeah. uh, that we have sitting here right in front of us, a 2U little box. So is this a storage product? Uh, no, this is a hyper-converged uh, solution, which has compute uh, storage all in one uh, very small package. So 2U little package here. So is that node like a single server? Uh, nope. Uh, so, so this is probably a, a very confusing part of Rail that, that a lot of people have got confused with. So if we look at the product here, uh, VX Rail, um, it, obviously storage and compute in, in the same package. If we, if we look at the front of it and take off the bezel, uh, we see at the front there's 24 drives. Um, those drives are broken into four chunks for four different servers that exist within this node. So a misconception of uh, VX Rail is that uh, four nodes, or the starting point, is four of these stacked up. No, this is our starting point, which is uh, four servers yeah. within, within this single uh, node. If we have a quick look at the back, um, we see here on the back that there's, here's the four nodes. They can be slid out uh, and feel replaced individually. So some pretty nifty hardware uh, within this rail unit. Very dense. Very cool. So you know what I love about rail is, uh, so this is the, the starting point, right? Effectively four nodes in, in a mm -hmm. box, a data center in a box with uh, compute and storage in time with, with one. It's, it's software defined. So the software stack is spanning the, the hardware and building the virtual SAN. So there's no external storage array. But look at the way it scales. Watch this. So we can go from one rack yep. with four nodes to let's say four yep. racks. Right? Yep. So now we've got sixteen nodes. Yep. How high? How high can we go? Well, we can go all the way up to. Uh, I don't think we can reach it. Uh, sixteen nodes, uh, which is essentially sixty-four uh, uh, hosts, which is the VMware vSphere limit for an HA cluster, all in one unit, scalable a host at a time. So we start with uh, the four hosts in the first nodes, rail yep. in two U. Uh, we can actually uh, start with three very, very shortly, uh, but after that, we can go a single node, or a single host at a time within each node. Right. So very, very granular in the scale out. Something our customers have been asking for a very, very long time. Okay, so let's dream big. Yeah. Right? Today, the technology goes to sixty-four nodes. Mm -hmm. Where do you think we could go? Where? How, how high? 
well, Monday. Well, it's basically the limit of VMware's HA limits, right? So the, the, hopefully uh, we will see those go up potentially double uh, in the future. So a very, very large uh, configuration. So very cool. if you think in a VM sense, um, at least, uh, you know, probably a couple hundred VMs per node. So we're talking 30, you know, over 3,200 VMs. In, uh, in so 3,000 in the system today, scaling even bigger over time. Good size VMs too. So, so who, who would use this? Where does it fit in the market? Well, where it fits in the market, uh, definitely if you have the hundreds to thousands of VMs and, mm -hmm. and you're a vSphere customer, um, this, is, this is a great solution, right? Uh, easy to consume, easy to scale. If you're looking at uh, multiples of thousands of VMs or tens of thousands of VMs, mm -hmm. really that's a rack scale hyper-converged solution. That's our VX rack product. And the reason why you would look at that over rail is that includes all the networking as well. So rail does not include a rack or networking by design. It's yeah. meant to be simple and easy to build up from very small to very large. Uh, a rack scale hyper-converged uh, uh, solution has your rack in networking and that's all thought about ahead of time, right? So, so back on rail, I guess a customer that had a few hundred to thousands of VMs in the data center, they're running things like databases, Oracle SQL, uh, Linux and Windows. They could be running virtual desktop. Yeah. Uh, Exchange would be a great fit. Yep. So they can consolidate all of those applications down to a single appliance, right? yep. one, one platform. If they've got thousands of VMs, this could be all they ever need in their, in and, their data center. And when you think about it, these 16 nodes or 64 servers could fit in a single rack. Yeah. Well, that's pretty awesome. And then the other great use case that I've seen, a couple of customers, particularly in retail lately, have adopted this for remote locations. So yeah. where they've got tens or hundreds of remote sites, mm -hmm. no administrators, very yep. low management, we'll get into that in a moment, uh, but they're placing these around the country or around the world as remote data center solutions for small to medium uh, requirements. And then sometimes in their large data centers as, as a workload of the platform as well. So very same product in a uh, robo type uh, mm -hmm. solution, starting with three servers and uh, in your central data center, something that goes up, up to 64 servers, all same product, that's pretty right. cool. All right. Let's drill, drill in the software. That's mm -hmm. my uh, favorite bit. So why don't we bring up the demo? We've got, uh, we've got the appliance running in the lab downstairs. Yep. Uh, so Dean, if you can uh, yep. so log in. So, so there's a, a VxRail management tool um, that is basically the, uh, yep. the way we manage this, this device. Yep, so what we, what we have here is we've logged into uh, VxRail uh, Manager. So it's a web-enabled GUI. Uh, so the, this is basically intended to manage your entire rail. So we have a quick view here of all the VMs that exist on a rail. Okay, so, so we just, just created two? Yeah, yeah, just have a couple two, uh, a couple of them, I'm sorry, uh, like sample ones. Mm -hmm. Start, stop, do all that sort of stuff that you would want to do within um, within rail as well obviously you should be able to create uh, VMs um, so uh, we can easily upload a, a image or use a template to create VMs so it gives you a very private cloud portal-ish uh, experience for creating VMs and this is all you know just part of the product yeah. uh, as well what you would expect is a very nice um, health view of, of the product so very very simple uh, system view, you know, things you want to see like storage, CPU usage, and, and memory usage within the product. And as well, you can drill down to the individual um, ESX components. So here I see the four ESX hosts within that single, single nodes that are yeah, here. Yeah. yeah. So you see those, all green check marks. So you see very quickly the health of the disk and, you know, networking and things like that. So very, very simple mm -hmm. uh, uh, to consume out of the uh, product. So here I can manage my network traffic, I can see my uh, performance from the storage perspective, see the RAM, the compute usage, and, and monitor the whole environment from one. All from VxRail Manager. By the way, uh, the cool thing, I think it's personally cool, uh, been using vSphere for a long, long time, is I can go into the vSphere web client and manage it out of there as well. So for all those administrators that know and love the uh, vSphere uh, vCenter instance, you can manage it straight out of there as well. So two different options. Uh, the VxRail gives you more private cloud type experience. Uh, the vSphere uh, web client gives you, you know, your standard vSphere experience. So, so for, a, for a vSphere administrator, they can learn how to manage this thing, provision, operate it in 10 minutes, right? Because you pretty much went through I would say uh, even less because, you know, it's, it's web client, right? So they would log in. It's, this is what I use every day, right? So it's pretty darn easy. And the VxRail manager, as you can see here, 
uh, it's, it's pretty darn easy. It's a simple uh, a GUI that just gets what you need done in terms of management and deployment of VMs. Yeah, very cool. So quick little demo there. Awesome. So uh, we want to do a little segment yep. called Fudbusters. Yes, right? Fudbusters. Uh, kind of loosely cut based on a popular TV show, but uh, mm -hmm. Dean, what's Fud? Explain uh, explain what that is. In well, Fud is an interesting phenomenon. So Fud, uh, well, it stands for fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Oh. And Fud is generated typically uh, by people or vendors, typically vendors. Uh, competitors. Competitors so of ours. You know, But anyways, it's, it's generated by an entity that is probably scared of the competition. Uh, mm -hmm. So they're trying to throw stuff out in the marketplace to muddy the waters uh, and confuse everybody out there. Um, and that's basically what FUD, FUD does. So it's really not that uh, uh, useful. <laughs> so there's some startup competitors that have, that have been throwing FUD at VX Rail. So oh, yeah, lots. Uh, so let's go through the top four FUD items against VX Rail and we'll, uh, we'll talk through the reality and the myths and, 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 and so forth. So let's. Let's do some FUD busting. So Dean, the first uh, FUD item that I've heard is mm -hmm. that there's five user interfaces for VxRail, uh, including one called VCE Vision. Can okay. you explain what, uh, so are there really five, first of all? Well, I have to be honest with you, there are multiple user interfaces. Right. And that's by design, because it's a VMware stack, right? Yeah. There's lots of VMware, uh, there's lots of VMware tools, whether you're using a rail, or another hyper-converged product, if it's using vSphere, you're probably using some of those tools anyway. So things like vRealize operations or Log Insight Manager. So they're right? all the tools that ESX administrators would be using today, right? But credit this VC Vision, what's that? <laughs> that's the funny one. Uh, that's not really part of Rail. <laughs> it's it's so a VC product, right. but it's for our blocks and racks. It's, okay. not, it's not for our Rail appliance. So Vision has nothing to do with Rail at the moment, so no. that's just completely so misinformation. Scratch that. So we're down to potentially four Correct. user interfaces. So one of those you've shown, and I guess that's the main user interface, which so, is Rail. So it's so a Rail manager. Uh, the other one would be the web client, which... So now you're talking about VMware tools, where, yep. where a VMware administrator is using tools today. Absolutely. Now, could I do provisioning in Rail if I wanted to, in the Rail manager? Absolutely. Could I do provisioning in vSphere if I wanted to? Absolutely. So the idea is multiple tools, we've just created choice based we, on simplicity e and ease of use. I think we all know EMC is about choice. We, uh, we don't like lock-in. Uh, we, we don't want to see people have to be retrained, right? So, yeah. so why wouldn't we support the web client, right? Uh, gotcha. it's, it's a vSphere-centric appliance, right? Yeah. So the web client exists, and so does Rail Manager. Rail Manager offers some other features. It's, I think it's going to be a hybrid approach that administrators use uh, with the product. I think it's a good thing. Uh, and it's not like you have to have them all up with the screen on the screen yeah. at the same time or anything like that. Cool. So that bus FUD number number one. Number one. Moving on to number two. Uh, so the second thing was that this is a, a v, vSphere only product, right? Mm -hmm. was, the, was the FUD that was thrown out, meaning it doesn't support Hyper-V and KVM and other other hypervisors. Mm -hmm. Is so first of all, true or false? Is that FUD true or false? Well, true. <laughs> it's, okay. a, it's it's a vSphere focused. It's a VMware focused product. Uh, so it only supports VMware. So it doesn't right. support uh, so, Hyper-V or KVM. Or so is that so that FUD's true? Is there a good reason? Why we do that? Uh, well, we do that because th this product is focused on, you know, it's an e a VMware EMC product, right? Yeah. And, and those two engineering groups working together to create the best possible experience for, for customers wouldn't happen if we we're trying to be jack of all trades of, of, of supporting every hypervisor. Mm -hmm. so, so we're uniquely focused on, uh, you know, VMware only. And that allows us to do some pretty cool things like, you know, in kernel operations that vSAN does, right? Uh, we wouldn't be able to do that if we were trying to support, you know, Hyper-V and other things with this appliance. So, so you're using terms like in kernel operation. What does that really mean for a customer? <laughs> so in kernel operation really means instead of doing low level operations, so like disk IO operations, yeah. in VMs, so traversing in and out of, you know, uh, virtual machines that are hosted within the VMware environment, we do those operations in the VMware kernel, right? Yeah. And it's, I wouldn't say it's more of a performance in terms of IOPS in the disk terms. I would say it's more of a latency thing. It's less steps to go through, right? Yeah. Less steps means a faster path to the endpoint, right. right? And I guess the other side is we then have the unique capability to uh, integrate tightly with the vSphere management tools, uh, with the VMware roadmap. Yep. So yep. It's, it's a nicely intertwined system from both an innovation perspective and a and a management. I think it's so, an awesome so truth, truth to it, but good reason yeah. why we do that. And yeah. we have other solutions to support 
multiple hypervisors if that's what a customer wants. Absolutely. But this is a unique product in that it's purpose built for ESX. The okay. MR only. Yeah. Third one, mm -hmm. I love this one. So VxRail apparently does not support VAAI. <laughs> what's what's VAAI and, mm -hmm. uh, and why would you use it? So VAI is basically what was introduced by VMware to offload operations to hardware, right? Okay. If you're um, connecting ser servers to external storage. Yeah. So let's take the storage example. There's different VAI, uh, you know, tool sets to offload certain operations to the storage array, which all our storage arrays support. Mm -hmm. um, but what VAI expects is an external storage platform, right? Yeah. And as you can see here. There isn't, an there isn't one. <laughs> so, so why would I offload operations from one to the other using VAI? That's a very good question. So, so <laughs> the reality in that it just would not make sense to have VAI no. in a hyper-converged environment. It defeats the purpose of we, having the We have vSAN in here that's integrated into the kernel and in, in, in VMware, so well, what's the point, right? right. So, so truth to the myth, but another. again busted because it's not really a, a consideration in the hyper-converged hyper world. Yep. Last one. Uh, and, and this was a big one, data reduction is only available on the all-flash models. So we have all-flash rail mm -hmm. models and mm -hmm. we have hybrid arrays using flash yep. and spinning disk. Yep. True or false? Uh, again, <laughs> again a truth. Uh, so I have to be blunt, it's absolutely true that we only support um, erasure coding, which is like kind of like RAID 5 and RAID 6, but on yeah. a VM level, uh, and uh, compression and data reduction in, in, in vSAN on all flash configurations, yeah. so that's true. So true, but can I share with you what I've seen in the market and, and uh, why this is the case? So mm -hmm. both with EMC technology and others, uh, when vendors try to build data reduction, so we're talking about compressing ones and zeros and reducing you know, bits down for transactional workloads on traditional spinning disk, mm -hmm. you can do it, but latency tends to skyrocket, mm -hmm. right? Dis traditional disk drives just aren't purpose built for mm -hmm. that type of solution. Yep. When we built that with Flash for EMC and other vendors, we get unbelievable latency combined with data reduction. Suddenly, performance skyrockets and we get efficiency savings. Mm -hmm. So the advantage becomes that in the Flash world, we can, we can provide amazing levels of performance while providing that data efficiency, which on traditional disks, I've seen at times where technologies, not ours or others, where traditional data reduction on traditional disks just hasn't worked well for high-performing transactional workloads. So I think it's it's a it's a, 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 a the right myth. It's mm -hmm. true, mm -hmm. but it's there for good reason. Yeah, I'm not trying to hide it. And what I'm seeing is uh, all flash configurations on rail. When you think about erasure coding, which is that RAID five, RAID six type experience, combine that with some of the data reduction, we're seeing price points that are similar, or sometimes even less than the hybrid configuration. So yeah. why would Very you even cool. want to go hybrid? So so Dean, I think we're going to have to. Wrap up now. I guess one last thing we, we didn't mm -hmm. touch on, and, and probably my favorite bit, and this is the real differentiator. Firstly, Rail is backed by EMC and VMware, mm -hmm. uh, two enterprise companies, leaders in the infrastructure market, and it's backed by our service and support. One number to call, one stop shop for, uh, for support, backed by the world leading, best in class service and support. Finally, Rail also comes with a unique capability that's like an app store mm -hmm. the ability to add on functions. We can add on replication. We can remotely replicate to, to a cloud service, to an object store like S3. Mm -hmm. uh, we can archive, we can back up to the cloud. We can add functions to the rail. So the day you get it, it's like the starting point. Mm -hmm. And over time, you can start to add functionality. So Dean, awesome. Yeah. Thanks for taking the time. Great to catch up with you, just one, yep. you know, one on one. And so great to have our virtual uh, VX right. Rail here. Great little guy and hugely popular and exploding in the market. Can't wait to see where it's going to scale to. Awesome. Thanks, Dean. Thanks, Thanks Matt. Matt.